Tonight on the show, I'll be having the most Oscar-nominated actress of all time. But who will it be? The nominations are Meryl Streep in The Devil Wears Prada, <laughs> Meryl Streep in The French Lieutenant's Woman, and <laughs> Meryl Streep in The Iron Lady. <laughs> That's versatile. That is versatile. And the winner is Meryl Streep! Let's go to the show! the new year with a bang. I couldn't be more excited because, yes, my favorite actress of all time, the great Meryl Streep is here! <laughs> really, it's her! The Incredible Hulk himself, Mark Ruffalo, is on the show! We love him! The always wonderful James McAvoy is joining us! Plus, We've got music from hot new Irish star Who's here? Yes, they are. He, he, it's a him. It's not a band, it's a him. And it, listen, so genuinely excited to be talking to Meryl Streep. She's appearing in the spectacular musical film Into the Woods. Now, it mixes up all sorts of classic fairy tales. Meryl plays the evil witch. <gasps> Have you ever seen such a scary character in a fairy tale? Have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christopher. The Woods features all your fairy tale favourites, including Little Red Riding Hood. <gasps> I wonder what frightening sights she'll see in the woods. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Grandma. <laughs> what big boyfriends you've got. <laughs> Into the Woods is not the only musical Meryl's been in, of course. Her biggest grossing film ever was Mamma Mia. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. We love that film. And in the film, Meryl's character has to work out which one of three men is the father of her child. And you do think, like, why do the men like her so much? Huh? 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 <laughs> uh, well, hey! That's incredible, isn't it? Uh, Meryl, Meryl, though, it's extraordinary. She's been in so many great films. I think she's probably one of the few stars who has never been in a massive turkey. Although, she did come close. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nearly! Uh, delighted to welcome back Mark Ruffalo onto the show. He's appearing in the new film Foxcatcher, where he plays an Olympic wrestler. Now, if you don't know what an Olympic wrestler looks like, uh, here's one. <laughs> Not sure what he's looking for, but I'm guessing he's found it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> James McAvoy, of course, star of the, uh, the X-Men, Atonement, and he was also Mr. Tumnus in The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe. <gasps> Ooh, doesn't that look chilly? It looks chilly, doesn't it? It looks really chilly. Chilly, I say it looks chilly. I wonder if there's anywhere in Britain that's been that frosty. <laughs> <laughs> Back to, to James and Mark, but the first time Meryl Streep's on the <laughs> phone. <laughs> and now, are you a bit? Are you, no, are you a bit? Re because you have, you've just been, you've just been at the premiere mixing with people. Yeah, <laughs> that kind of like it's <laughs> stars that are upsetting. <laughs> yeah. well, keep looking. <laughs> uh, well, no, look down. Uh, I'll just look down. And at the premiere, did you mingle? Do you do the autographs? Do you do the photographs? Nobody wants an autograph anymore. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. They all want a selfie. 
coffee. Yes. So you have to stand there while they, they get it, and then they don't like it. Yeah. And then, <laughs> um, I, I, I've never asked, but can we just do another one? And then, <laughs> and then get their whole face ready. And yes, it takes a long time. But leave anyway. I've seen online, you do selfies with celebrities. Yes, occasionally. Yeah, well, no, there's one that this is you and Fiddy. Fiddy Scent there? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> who asked who there? Well, that's his camera. I, okay. I don't know how to work it. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing with, with people taking photographs, they're really persistent. Like, Mark, didn't you have the thing... Were you in New York going to a... I was in Toronto. Oh, Toronto. And, and I was chased for two blocks. Uh, oh. <laughs> and uh, the guy said he saw me get out of a cab, I, and um, I was two blocks away from the restaurant I was going to. So he parked his car and started following me. And uh, he caught me two blocks later uh, to ask if he could do a selfie, and then um, his phone died. <laughs> <laughs> so he asked if he could do a selfie with my phone, <laughs> and if I would email him the picture. Yeah. Which I did. Yeah, you did, did you really? No. No. <laughs> The selfie thing, like, so James, because you're about to be in a play in the West End, so stage doors, do you have yeah. a policy for the stage door? Oh, yeah. uh, you try and be a good guy, and you try and yeah. talk to everybody and yeah. see every single person. But what do you uh, really do? Uh, you <laughs> run with a cat and a <laughs> moustache at the front door <laughs> as the audience are leaving. And, uh, no, you, so you try and be a good guy and all that kind of stuff, but you can be there for quite a long time. Uh, yeah. But it's, it's nice to try and see everybody, but then sometimes people get disappointed when they come for a matinee, because... Mm. In between two show days, you've got an hour and a half to yourself and all that, and you don't go out to go see everybody, and they get the right arse sometimes. Yeah. Mm. But do you, do you want proof that they've been to see the play? Yeah, that's another thing. When I mean, people go like, oh, yeah, love to play, love to play, could you sign this X-Men thing? And you're like, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you in 15 different locations in London over the past week, my friend. So, yeah. Uh, now, obviously, you were in... Was it in Leicester Square, the premiere? No, it was at the Curzon. Mayfair? Oh. It's Ooh. a Tony sort of. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. It's a love scale. Yeah, yeah, it is upscale. Because, of course, it's the premiere of uh, Into the Woods, yeah. which opens tonight, if you want to go and see it, and you should, because it is a terrific movie. It's Thank just, you. It's great. And we thought we'd seen you play everything, but first which? <laughs> Mostly bitches. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, my first witch. But you, I hear you went through a phase of you got offered a lot of witches. When I was 40, when I turned 40, I was offered three witches in one year. Oh. And it was sending me a signal, I felt, <laughs> about Hollywood and how they felt about people turning 40. You know? <laughs> so I felt uh, bad. And, I, I, and it made me sort of... I had, a, like, a little... My backup, you know, and so no, I didn't want to play them. So a lot's <laughs> changed in the last five years for you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. good, yeah. Mark. Good. <laughs> oh. 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 You're right. I smell. I smell. I was looking I think for an I excuse. Fainted. So oh. time, yeah. That was wow. so smooth, Mark Ruffalo. <laughs> <laughs> so smooth. It never works like that. <laughs> But here's the thing, you're not just any old witch, your witch kind of sets the whole story in motion. Yeah, she sort of, uh, she, well, it's Stephen Sondheim, so it's a complicated witch, you know, it's not just straight on evil, she's motivated by love but for her daughter and she wants to keep her safe, so she puts her Rapunzel up in a tower. I mean, what mother wouldn't? Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Stephen Sondheim, he's written a song specially for you. Which... He did, and I, I said, well, I, I'm dying to hear it. And he said, well, come to my uh, townhouse. I went with the director, and he played it for me, and wow. he sang it for me. And his voice is kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't anything I could steal, but uh, <laughs> it was great. And it, it sort of showed me what he wanted to convey in the song. And at the end, he handed me the sheet music, and I said... Would it be too odd if I, you know, asked you to autograph it? And he said, I, of course, of course. And he wow. took it back and he pulled out that beautiful Mont Blanc pen and he wrote, don't fuck it up, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, okay. 
And while we're blowing smoke, uh, we should say a huge congratulations, Golden Globe nomination. Thank you. Uh, that, that, <laughs> This deserves it more. It's your 29th Golden Globe nomination. Uh, 29 of them. Oh no. That's phenomenal. It's a good thing. I'm so old. <laughs> He's only been in 26 movies, which is <laughs> the amazing part about that. Yeah, some of them are so good. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing. Like, so obviously now it's a well-oiled machine, and it's mm. sort of you know, stylists and this and that and yeah, be here, only, da da da. Yeah. But back when you started going, mm. back in the kind of the Deer Hunter, Kramer versus Kramer days, mm. Mm. was it was it very different? It was very different. It was, um, the Golden Gloves was a little afternoon event that was held at lunchtime, and it was on closed circuit television for the Los Angeles area, Los Angeles County only. I remember Jack Nicholson was there really drunk at <laughs> 1 15 in the afternoon, and it was a great, great, you know, just go forever. But I was there after. Yeah, Kramer versus Kramer giving birth to my first child. And in those days, I didn't have, you know, they didn't lend you dresses, so you had to buy something, and I didn't have any money. So I wore my wedding dress, as you would. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was a perfectly nice white silk dress. But the luncheon went on, you know, and I was, I was breastfeeding, and... Um, Two o'clock came, three o'clock came, four o'clock came, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in a white dress. <laughs> so I sat like this, and um, they called my name. I won, and I walked up. <laughs> and got it. And I said thank you very much. And they thought I was so. Odd, you know, but <laughs> it was so embarrassing. <laughs> but only to the LA County, so no one else. Uh, but now, what's extraordinary uh, about you is that you—it was so kind of—you seemed so quick off the blocks, if you know what I mean. In that, you know, it was Julia, Deer Hunter, and then Kramer oh. versus Kramer, yeah. an Oscar already. Yeah. And see, in my head, I'm thinking like that's a new film. <laughs> But, well, time flies. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Uh, my mother always told me to throw these away, and I'm so glad I didn't. Because, look, here's my old cover topic of Playgirl. <laughs> <laughs> and there you are, Meryl Streep, the freshest face of Hollywood. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. And, and if you have any doubt about how long ago it was, yeah. this is genius. Uh, Playgirl picks America's ten sexiest men, OK? <laughs> yeah. O.J. Simpson. <laughs> oh, my God. That's how long ago... Wow. <laughs> that's how long wow. ago wow. it was. Things have changed. Isn't yeah. that incredible? That's you can have amazing. it if you want. Oh, my God. I say that. Oh, well, yeah, we have it now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and your mother always told you not to throw those away? No, she said to throw them away. To throw them yeah, away. Yeah, and I right. said, no, one day they'll come in useful, and now look. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the thing is, I think this is comforting. People, young actors out there should take solace because it, although the success was very fast and everything, yeah. not all the auditions went that brilliantly <laughs> I know. In, in the beginning. No. Do you know the one I'm talking about? No. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it there did go so brilliantly. Many. The, the <laughs> one with Dino De Laurentiis. Oh, auditioning, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, well, that was for King Kong. Uh, not for, for, for the girl. Yeah, 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 for the girl. <laughs> <laughs> She's very good. <laughs> now I could play the other one. Now I got that down. But um, yeah, that was uh, Dino De Laurentiis Sr. And his son um, had seen me in a play. And so um, I went up to the top of the Gulf and Western building, the, like the 33rd floor, and he had this amazing office that looked all over Manhattan, and he was back there. And um, I walked in, and, and his son was sitting there, very excited that he'd brought in this new actress. And the father said to his son, in Italian, because I understand Italian, he said, Che brutta. You know, why do you bring me this ugly thing? Whoa. Yeah. Very sobering, oh. you know, as a young girl. Um, so I said to him, me dispiace molto, you know, but I understand what you're saying. I'm sorry I'm not beautiful 
enough to be in King Kong. <laughs> James, when, what was the thing you were up for when they wanted to do the, the really crazy, the, were you some sort of drug, was it a oh, drug Oh, mate, that was a nightmare. But I've had a horrible amount. I've had many auditions that I've had yeah. to get myself out of because it was, it was just bad, 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 bad. But also when you're a young actor, they just make you do stuff that you there was, know. There was one particularly, uh, I, my agent once put me up with something which, which she was convinced was, was going to be something great for me. I had to learn songs, I had to play the guitar and all that kind of stuff. I said, no problem. And of course, the day came and I just, I've been rubbish at all that. So uh, I didn't have it. And I stood in front of them, and my heart was in my mouth, and I just thought, I've got to get out of this. So I started to cry, and I said... <laughs> and I said... And they'll probably, if they ever hear this, they'll think, wow, we really believed him, he's an absolute bastard. Uh, I said, I made myself cry, and I went, I'm really sorry, I'm really sorry. I've just had a phone call from my mate, he's been knocked down, he's in the hospital, and I'm going to need to... <laughs> and I'm going to need to go, and I'm going to... I'm, I'm really... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to need... Oh, do you want me to play? <laughs> hey, dude! <James. laughs> and they were like, no, 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 you must go, you must run, you must run. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so you should be. You know what show you are. <laughs> yeah. hey, now, Meryl Streep, we mm. can't have you here without talking about your amazing prowess with the accents. Oh. Well, you are amazing at them. And with the accent. Well, that's the accent. That's <laughs> the accents. Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> but do you have, like, are you just fully confident? Have you ever got a script yeah. and kind of go, whoa, can't do this one? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that every time. But I, I don't, I don't, I'm not a natural at it, actually. I'm not. Like, my friend Tracy Ullman, she can sit for five seconds with somebody and then lean over to me and do them. You know, she's amazing, amazing. I, I can't do that. I, I, I sort of, I have to work a little bit har harder, and I like it. I like going deep into, into that sort of thing because it conjures up a whole, a whole world. But, um, yeah. What's the hardest? Which one have you found the toughest thus far? Scottish. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I want to have a go? <laughs> <laughs> No, I, was, I don't mean to put you in a cool? spot, Mojo. Uh, <laughs> and you start to cry. No, so favorite. your friend's been knocked over. <laughs> <laughs> to get you out of it. Oh, do, do a bit, do a bit. Do a bit, do a bit. All right. Uh, can you say, uh, this place is pure hooch in my ball bags? <laughs> this place is. I believe that was the first thing that came out of my ball bag. <laughs> <laughs> This place is pure hooch in my wool bags. <laughs> 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 uh, opening tonight, also, opening tonight is a movie, it's sure to do well this award season. It's called Foxcatcher, and one of its stars is Mr. Mark Ruffalo. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, based on a true story, yes. and it's, it's an extraordinary mm. story. Mm. What, what can you tell us about it? Um, well, uh, in mid-90s, um, there was a, uh, John DuPont, who was the heir of the DuPont fortune, uh, basically took in, uh, the American wrestling, uh, Olympic wrestling team, uh, onto his farm, uh, as their benefactor. So he got these wonderfully talented people to, to go and live there, uh, and, and, and basically have them call him coach. Two brothers. And, yes. and so the two, so I play one of two brothers, the Schultz brothers, uh, Dave and Mark Schultz. I play Dave Schultz. And they, they were uh, American wrestling um, heroes, icons. Yes. Uh, they, they were the, the best that America had produced up until that point. And the, the performances are amazing. I mean, you're so good in it. But it, yeah. the fact that you have done a lot of wrestling, did that come into play in you were wanting to do it, you are being asked to do it? That was the only reason they cast me. <laughs> Stop that now. No. Stop it. No, um, I, I, did, I did wrestle in high school. And, uh, and so I thought that that was going to help me, uh, give me a leg up, until I had to wrestle against Channing Tatum. <laughs> that guy. Whose arm is bigger than my torso. <laughs> but you got very strong. Yeah, I, I put on 30 pounds. Wow. 
Uh, but now We're I spoke here. to Steve Carell about it briefly, and I think it's fair to say he said making this film was not a barrel of laughs. It was quite mm. tough. Yeah. It was, uh, we were shooting in Pittsburgh in the winter. It was, it was, uh, we, there was that's never any lovely. heat. A that's lovely place. Lovely. <laughs> uh, if you like steel mills that don't function anymore. Yeah. Um, so, so it was, uh, it was, it was cold and, and we had to wrestle all the time. And, uh, the wrestling was really, I'm, I was playing a, a 35 year old man who's at the, the peak of his athletic prowess. And I'm a 47 year old man who is at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> prowess, whatever's left of it. And is it true the thing that you guys didn't really hang out, you didn't socialize, you didn't break? Channing and I were together every moment. Uh, oh, okay. but, but Steve Carell was sort of off in his own uh, thing. And, and, and you'll see, the way he looks in the movie is so repulsive that no one wanted to talk to him <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Because Anne Hathaway, when she was there, she was saying the same thing on The Devil About of West Prada. It was real. Yeah. That, not that you know, not that you were horrible, <laughs> but, that, but that no one spoke. People, you didn't speak. Oh, well, they all had, they all had a fabulous time. <laughs> Stanley Tucci and Emily Blunt and Anne Hathaway. <laughs> 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 and then you I was were. off in my camper <laughs> sulking. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't, I th thought it wouldn't be helpful. I'm sure Steve yeah. was thinking this way, because mm -hmm. when you, and I like to have a good time. I mean, I really, that's basically why I'm in it, you know, is, is to have fun. And, uh, but I couldn't do that and then sort of walk in and chill the blood. So it, it is a funny thing. Because James McAvoy, when you were in The Last King of Scotland, yeah. uh, <laughs> Forrest Whitaker, he stayed. Did he stay in? Yeah. That's good, though, good. Oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> but, but Forrest Whitaker did that thing of, being idiot, I mean, all the time. Oh, he did? Yeah, man. It was, it was kind of weird. I was lucky. I was sort of allowed in. Uh, he was gorgeous. Listen, he was never, like, in character. He was never committing, you know... <laughs> atrocities. <laughs> atrocities yes. Yes. in, in yeah. Crimes yeah. Against yeah. Humanity. That's good. But, um, but I remember one particular day, we were driving this car and I had a beautiful little clapped-out uh, Mercedes, like 70s Mercedes in the, in the <laughs> thing, uh, which had a hole in the bottom, Flintstone style. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it was one of Edie's original uh, cars as well. Oh anyway, so I was driving him. Uh, little did he know that I didn't have a driver's licence at the time. <laughs> uh, whilst I was tail-fishing round corners in between takes. <laughs> and uh, he, he was, oh, I, I have to take this call. And he stayed in character and he was on the phone to his lawyer. <laughs> and it was brilliant. He was like, how much money do they want for their part? I cannot believe it. <laughs> it is unbelievable. <laughs> the worst Ugandan accent you've ever heard. All of Uganda, uh, please, please forgive me. Hey, we've got a clip. We've got a clip of Fark Thatcher. Uh, now, this is uh, yourself and Channing Tatum. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, uh, it is extraordinary. And if you didn't get that, was Steve Carell. Talking to Mark there. And Channing Tatum. Yeah. 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 We, we kind of... I wasn't in that clip. Channing <laughs> <laughs> Tatum's unrecognizable. He's unrecognizable. Uh, yeah. uh, because, you know, obviously, Steve Carell prosthetics, but you really did it. I mean, the hair, the weights. Amazing. It's How a good look, right? It... Well, <laughs> How long did you have to look like that for? A long time. <laughs> <laughs> months and months. <laughs> How did that go down at home? Not well. <laughs> Just turn off the light, darling. I we'll play look. intruder tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this one time. <laughs> <laughs> now, the Hulk, weirdly, no prosthetics for the Hulk, but uh, green suits. Yes, uh, a uh, new prosthetic. So you just wear the green People suit. People ask me all the time, like, how long did you have to stay in the makeup chair for that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, all the time they ask me that. <laughs> did, you, did, did you have to work out for that? <laughs> but are you aware of all the concern online amongst the Mark Ruffalo fans? about what the finished Hulk would look like? I know all my fans by name. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you all know... seven of them. You know their worries. <laughs> you know their concerns. You know their worries. No, there was a lot of concern yeah. amongst the Mark Ruffalo fans that the Hulk would not retain his beautifully pursued chest. Oh. They thought he might be hairless. Oh. But yeah. happily, the, the Hulk has got some hair it's on It's the first on. Hulk in the history of movie-making. All three movies.
Yeah. That <laughs> all two of them now. Yeah. Where, uh, where, where the Hulk has body hair. Wow. It's a revolution, Meryl. It's a revolution. It's yeah. really. Yeah. We're doing some uh, groundbreaking work. Yeah. Well, you're probably familiar then, Mark, since you are a campaigner <laughs> for the hairy chest. Yeah. You're probably familiar with the. There's a site called Hairy Chest I Want to Cry On. Have you heard of this? <laughs> There really is. There really is. Your producing team made me aware of that, yes. Yeah. So, uh, you, you are front and centre on this. There you are. I have to say, you look really like Whoa. Lenny Kravitz. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah. That's not me. Is that really not you? That's Lenny Kravitz. Is it really Lenny? <laughs> no. No, that's me. That is you. <laughs> Don't mess with my head. <laughs> the, the person who ever posted this put a little comment on the side, Mark Ruffalo, more like Mark Buffalo. <laughs> Look at that hairy hide. <laughs> Speaking of buffalo, I want to drive his body to the verge of extinction. <laughs> What was that person's name? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but actually, there's other people on it. There's other people on it. There are, of course, of course, a uh, um, uh, uh, co-star of yours features on it. Here he is. It's Pierce. Yes. Oh. Of course. Yeah. Uh, I like this. Did you know men weren't allowed to be photographed in the 80s? Unless they exposed some chest hair while riding a yacht. <laughs> Some surprising people on this website, and now brace yourself, Meryl, because uh, am I on it? No. Okay. <laughs> I think we'd have warned you. <laughs> we'd have gone over that beforehand. <laughs> we'd have said, "Are you cool with this?" <laughs> I mean, it's pretty flattering. You look toned. Uh, <laughs> no, I believe, if I read correctly, an old crush of yours appears on here. Look, it's our very own Prince Charles. Oh. Is that yeah, true that you... my man. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> His royal hairiness. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true that you really, well, when you were much when, Well, younger? when I was really? younger, uh, when I was a kid, I, I found out that we were born in the same year. And so I figured it was pretty likely that we'd get married one day. <laughs> Is it true you told him of that? <laughs> I didn't tell him about it. <laughs> <laughs> it was nonplussed. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay, it's nice, it's okay, New fine. Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, finally, finally, because we have to, he's the, you know, he really is the daddy yeah. of all screen hairiness. Uh, no, Sean Connery. Oh, Thanks, Sean. Oh, Great oh, shot. Oh, With, I love oh, this. Wow. This is my favorite comment ever. Oh. Sean Connery. If I were that lady, I'd mash my face into his chest so hard my nose would break. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, we must say, James McAvoy, James McAvoy, uh, back in the West End because you'd huge success at the Trafalgar Studios uh, with Macbeth. Thank you. And now you've reunited with the same team and you're back there with a play called The Ruling Class. It opens on the 16th of January. Yeah. Is it The Ruling Class that Peter O'Toole did? did the, the, yeah, he did the movie of version of it. They made The play came out in 1968 and oh. then they did the movie in, I think, 1971 yeah, or something. Enough. How do you know you're God? Uh, oh, simple. <laughs> when I pray to him, I find I'm talking to myself. <laughs> that, that's a great line. That's a great line. Play. Wow. Wow. Line. I was going to say people had forgotten this play, but they clearly haven't. Yeah, they're they're all over it's it. It's a great part. When I first it's read it, I thought, it's an incredible piece, but is it perhaps maybe out of date? It's about the aristocracy in, in the 60s in, in the UK, and I thought, you know, do we care about that anymore? I grew up in the classless society as termed and coined by John Major, and then we had Rule Britannia and, you know, New Labour and all that, and I was like, do we care about class? And then I started reading it, and it's just exactly the right time for this play. Mm. In, the, in the same month that uh, that guy, Kerry Smith, from UKIP said we should all go hunting peasants, and that... Uh, you know, disgusting poofters and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> this play is exactly about the people who are in government that the, that system of education mm. creates. And it's an incredible... It's, it sounds quite serious. It's actually pretty funny. Very and good. you're singing in it? Uh, I'm singing. I'm, uh, yeah, singing and dancing. I'm doing a bit of opera, a um, bit of uh, vaudeville and a bit of dancing. You play the flute? Oh. I play the flute in it. 
And, have, you uh, to, have you had to learn to play the flute? Yes. You, well, no, I've, I've, I've had to learn how to be good at playing this one particular thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I could do that, but nothing else. OK. Yeah. And, and this is weird, Mark Ruffalo, what are the chances of this coming into our lives again? You have learned the unicycle. <laughs> uh, I, I like to uni. Do you like to uni? <laughs> <laughs> Mark Ruffalo, I'd love you? to uni. Would you uni? I'd love to uni. Um, do you know this? The Mark Ruffalo, not only was he a wrestler, this is this is the, so the last time he was on, no. Mark and one of his testicles had. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we, Which one? we really worried for you. Many. We really worried for you because he got on that unicycle. Look at the size of that. Good, good. Can you see? See, like, on a unicycle. It's, it's a huge one. How do you know how to do that? I wanted to be a clown. <laughs> wow. 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 There's a helpline available. Is your... <laughs> That was my I dream. I had no idea yours was that big. <laughs> <laughs> you, you feel foolish now, <laughs> don't you? I know. <laughs> hey, but, I you, but, but listen, we've got some unicycles in. We've got some <laughs> unicycles in. So you can do this. Uh, you define can. <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. You can, right, yeah, the okay. It's in the visual pudding. Yes. So if you come over to the unicycle... Okay. Can you really do this? Is this I like, can, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you... No, don't do it there. Do it on the ground. No, 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 do it down here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do it over here, shall okay, I? But be careful of that thing. Don't hit what your head. Thing? Okay. God, this is... Um, no. This uh, is terrible. I'm, I, I think I can, like, sort of do it. Are you going to start to cry and tell us a friend's been running? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, sort of, like, uh, I, I, I kind of... Uh, in the play, right, I just need to come on riding it. I don't need to get on it. On so, stage. So, should so I what I'm saying is, would you help me get yes, it up? Yes, yes, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, it was a cheap gag. I had yeah, to go yeah. for it. Right. <laughs> Cheers. How do right. I do that? This is going to be a disaster, uh, isn't it? Okay. Okay, right. he's, he's oh, up, he's up, he's up. Oh, okay. oh, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood. Here we go. Oh, whoa! Oh, 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 oh. Right, one more go, one more go, one more go, one more go. One more go. Oh, God, give me strength, man. Right, I'll, I'll do it myself. No, 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 I'll do it myself. I'll okay. do it myself. Okay. Right. Give me some room, man. Yeah. Whoa. Oh. We've got another one. We've got another one. We've got another one. You can you can both do it together. Here we go. Oh, look at your. Oh, oh. Hindi. Hey, smart. Okay. We're gonna do it together. Don't crash into each other. Uh, you sure, Meryl? There is another one. <laughs> metal. 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 <laughs> if metal. Oh, look at him go. Ride, if metal was to ride on my seat, I'd never wash it again. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Yeah, I'll follow you up. No, no, no. You go first. Uh, <laughs> somebody go. <laughs> we'll get rid of them while the music, because we can talk... Not with them, yeah, no. <laughs> We can talk no more, so it is time for music. Performing the most played song of 2014, we predict even bigger things for him in 2015. Here with Take Me to Church, it is Hosier! <laughs> well done, sir. Congratulations. Come on over here. Thank you. That's James McAvoy! It's only Meryl Streep. It's only Meryl Streep. <laughs> hey, sit down there. Sit down there, sir. Now, it, who's your hosier? Hosier. Uh, hosier. 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 I'll get good at that. <laughs> and this is congratulations. What an amazing 2014 you had. It's, it's been... It was crazy. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. A lot of fun. <laughs> well, no, because you were just sat in Bray in Ireland, and then suddenly I heard the song, a friend of mine sent it to me, and I thought, oh, that might come here. It didn't come here. It went to America. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huge. You. Huge. Huge. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of it was completely unexpected, I think. So this time last year was very, very different. My schedule was very, very different. <laughs> 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 a, more, a more free time. <laughs> uh, and, of course, the album, the album's out now, also called 
Hosier. Hosier. Yeah. Hosier. <laughs> Hosier. Not Hosier. Hosier. And this is your mother. Your mother did this to you. Yeah, yeah. My mom is, a, is an artist. <laughs> she did this to me. But is she <laughs> not good at doing faces? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's, she's fantastic. I actually asked her to remove my face from the painting. Okay. And now, you know, these, no, but these things, it, you know, a lot of opportunities come yeah. with the sort of success you had last year. And one of the opportunities you had was to perform at the Victoria's Secrets fashion show. Yeah. Now, look at, look at him here, <laughs> trying to focus on his music. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, like, not even pretending. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, the, to be fair, and, uh, <laughs> no, I know... To be fair, why wouldn't you? There's no... Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, I'd, never, I'd never done a fashion show, but in, in, certainly in, in that fashion show as well. I mean, I'm used to... You know, holding onto a guitar and stuff, and having something to do with my hands. So it was very, and it's like small <laughs> audiences. No, 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 yes, sir, no, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, no. But in this, the, the model, the models. Sorry. And a guitar yeah, could have yeah, been very handy yeah, in that. A lot of this going on here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm digging it. I'm digging it all here. <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, thank you so much for coming and do that song for us, and good luck with the album. Okay. And, and yeah. just all the best for the next year. You, you seem like a really lovely, genuine man, so. No, yeah, pleasure. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for having yeah. me. Thank you very much. Talking to everyone, I think there's just enough time to hear the first stories of the year in the big red chair. So, uh, who's there? Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? I'm Ali. Ali. And uh, where are you from, Ali? I'm from London. Okay. And what do you, what do you do, Ali? I'm a writer. Who oh, right. of? Oh. Uh, lots of things. Critical theory. <laughs> <laughs> If you can't answer the questions, you can't tell a story. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next? Oh, hello. Hello, Graham. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm uh, Keith. Keith, lovely. And uh, what do you do, Keith? I'm an actor. All right. And uh, would we have seen you in anything? Uh, not unless you've been to Pit Lockery recently. <laughs> well, I, I... Oh, look, yeah. So, I've not been to Pit Lockery in a long time, but I've been to Pit Lockery. Yeah. But did you, were you, did you ever do that job? No, I never did it. I saw something in Pit Lockery. Oh, OK, <laughs> lovely. It's a, a small rep yeah. in the middle of Scotland. Small... Yeah. It's huge! OK. <laughs> uh, what you, uh, what, what, Keith, oh. Keith. Oh, so, what's, what's your surname so we can look it out for it in lights? It's Keith McLeish. Keith? Keith McLeish. McLeish? Yeah. I, I changed that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really catchy. It's a it's a lovely. Thing. Thing. No, Keith McLeish. It's Keith McLeish. Thanks, Meryl. I remember yeah, that. So I'm yeah. going to remember that all night. <laughs> Amazing. OK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Keith just died and gone to heaven. <laughs> OK, Keith, off you go with the story. Quick, quick, quick. OK, so I was travelling back from Vietnam and I got <laughs> stuck in... <laughs> Wait, is this improv? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sure. I got stuck in Bangkok Airport and um, there was going to be a bit of a wait, so I thought I'd go for a massage. Um, now, obviously, I had heard stories about Bangkok massage parlours before, but I thought, it's an airport, it'll be legit. Um, <coughs> so I found a spa <laughs> called Lucky Spa. Oh, please. No, we so know where this is going. <laughs> no. Gone. <laughs> Meryl Streep did not want to hear the end I of that story. I know. Do you think it was I don't like, think we know what the ending was. was. <laughs> <laughs> Just contact us via our website at this very address. That is it for tonight. Please say thank you to my guests at Hosier, everybody. <laughs> James McAvoy! <laughs> Mr. Mark Ruffalo! <laughs> and the one and only Meryl Streep! <laughs> Join me next week with music from the sensational Jesse J, Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein, and Broadchurch stars David Tennant and Olivia Colman. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye!